Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can create custom mailbox views in Outlook if needed. To create a custom mailbox view in Outlook, first select the folder to which to apply the mailbox view from the folder pane at the left side of the application window. Then click the View tab in the ribbon. Then click the Change View button in the Current View button group. Then select the Manage Views command from the drop-down menu that appears to open the Manage All Views dialog box. The Manage All Views dialog box in Outlook shows all the selected mailbox folders, available views, and their settings. You can select any view here and then modify it, or reset modifications you've made to it. You can also create, edit, or delete your own custom mailbox views in Outlook by using this dialog box. To create a new mailbox view in Outlook, click the New button in this dialog box to open the Create a New View dialog box. Then type a name for the new view into the Name of New View field. Below that, select the type of view to create. Table, which shows information in columns and rows. Timeline, which shows items accessed over a time period. Card, which shows information in a card view. Business card, which shows information using an alternate card view. People, which shows a list of people like the People folder. Day, Week, Month, which shows information in a Day, Week, Month style. Or Icon, which shows icons for folder items. After choosing a base folder view, select who can see this new view. Your choices are this folder visible to everyone, this folder visible only to me, or all mail and post folders. Then click the OK button to open the Advanced View Settings dialog box. This dialog box has seven buttons you can click to change the view's settings. Depending on your selected base view type, however, not all the buttons are necessarily available. To set the appearance of columns, if available for your selected type of base view, click the Columns button to open the Show Columns dialog box. Set the maximum number of lines in compact mode by using the drop-down to the right of that label. Then use the Select Available Columns From drop-down to choose a set of fields to display in the left list. To add an available field to your new view, select it in the left list, and then click the Add button to add it to the right list. To remove a field, click its name in the right list. Then click the Remove button. To change the order of the added columns, select a field in the right list, and then click the Move Up or Move Down buttons below it until the column is in the right place. After adding and arranging the view's columns, click the OK button. To set how to group the view's items, if available for your selected type of base view, click the Group By button to open the Group By dialog box. This is usually only used for the table style base view to group items by the same values in a selected field or fields into expandable and collapsible groups. To apply automatic grouping by the arrangement of items, check the Automatically Group According to Arrangement checkbox. To manually set grouping, use the drop down under Group Items By to select a field by which to group the view's items. Then set the group's sort order by choosing either the ascending or descending option at the right end of the field. You can also create subgroupings for three additional fields by repeating this process for the three then by sections that follow the main group if desired. To apply the grouping when finished, click the OK button. To apply sorting to your view, if available for your selected type of base view, click the Sort button to open the Sort dialog box. Select the field by which to primarily sort the view's items from the Sort Items by drop-down. Note that you can choose from which fields to sort by using the Select Available Fields From drop-down that appears at the bottom of the dialog box. After selecting a field, then set the field sort order by selecting either ascending or descending order to the right of the field. To apply secondary, tertiary, or quaternary sorting, Repeat the same process for the following Then By sections. You can sort by up to four fields. 
When finished, click the OK button to set the view sorting. To apply filtering to the view's items, if available for your selected type of base view, click the Filter button to open the Filter dialog box. This dialog box has four tabs, Messages, More Choices, Advanced, and SQL. Click the tab you want to use to set the criteria that will include or exclude items in your view. The Messages tab lets you choose filtering criteria by using many common email fields. The More Choices tab lets you choose filtering criteria for assigned categories, message statuses, message option settings, and other advanced filtering options. The Advanced tab lets you filter by any Outlook field's value by using the Field drop-down to select any available Outlook field. Then use the Condition drop-down to select a comparison condition and, if needed, type the value to which to compare the selected field's value into the Value field. Then click the Add to List button to add it to the list box above. The SQL tab lets you filter the view's items by using structured query language if you are familiar with how SQL is used in Outlook. After creating any filters for your view, click the OK button to set them. To apply font and other view settings if available for your selected type of base view, click the Other Settings button to open the Other Settings dialog box. The content shown here changes depending on the type of base view you are creating. Generally, though, you can change the font used for the different sections of your view and set any view-specific options in this dialog box. Make any desired changes and then click the OK button to apply them. To apply conditional formatting, if available, for your selected type of base view, click the Conditional Formatting button to open the Conditional Formatting dialog box. Conditional formatting lets you create rules that apply selected formatting to items that match a given criteria. Some rules appear here by default in the Rules for this view list and you can add more. Rules that are checked are applied and rules that are unchecked are not applied. You can click a checkbox to check it or uncheck it. To add a new rule, click the Add button at the right side of this dialog box to add a new rule to the list. Then type a name for the rule into the Name field. Then click the Font button to open a dialog box that lets you set the font formatting to use on an item that matches the condition you are about to set. Then click the OK button in the Font dialog box to set it. Then click the Condition button to set the criteria that, when met, applies the formatting that you just selected. You have the same choices available here as you did when you set the View's filtering without the SQL tab. After setting the condition, then click the OK button to apply it and return to the Conditional Formatting dialog box. To delete a rule, click it to select it in the Rules for this view list, and then click the Delete button to the right. When finished, click the OK button in the Conditional Formatting dialog box after setting your conditional formatting. To format the columns if customizing a table type of view in Outlook, click the Format Columns button to open the Format Columns dialog box. Then select the name of the field to format from the Available Fields list at the left side of this dialog box. Then change its settings at the right side of this dialog box. After setting the display of the desired columns, click the OK button to apply them. After setting all the view's settings, click the OK button in the Advanced View Settings dialog box to return to the Manage All Views dialog box. The name of your new view then appears in the list of views in this dialog box. To apply the view, click its name to select it in the list. Then click the Apply View button at the bottom of the dialog box. Alternatively, you can also apply a custom view by clicking the View tab in the ribbon. Then click the Change View button in the Current View button group. Then select the name of the custom view that appears in the drop-down menu. To modify or delete a custom view, 
select the name of the view from the listing that appears within the Manage All Views dialog box. To change its settings again and edit it, click the Modify button to the right. To delete it, click the Delete button instead. When finished using the Manage All Views dialog box, click the Close button at the bottom of the dialog box to close it. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.